Praise God. We give God the praise for you, and we thank God for you viewing the telecast, and we love you so very much. As we begin to deal God's will, we cordially invite you out to the body of Christ located at 11780 Ohio in Detroit, Michigan. We would like for you to be our special guest. We are also, a, we also did what we call the Supernatural Word Ministry. In the early morning watch, we come on from the hours of 3.30 to 5 o'clock. Many of you that understand radio, you might be on your way to work at that time. You can cut us on on WMUZ 103.5 FM, and you can hear us there praying and believing for people that may not be able to believe for themselves, standing in the gap and making up the hedge. Join us at any given time, and may the Spirit of God bless you again and again, my friend, as you come out and you join us in our services. In Jesus' name, amen. Boy, to come into the house of God. I like what the psalmist said. I was glad when they said it to me, let us go into the house of God. It's a great place to be at such a time like this, is in the house of the Lord. Amen. I understand that the earth is God's and, and the fullness of and they that dwell therein. We are his people, and we're the people of God that bring the first fruits to the altar, which is our sacrificial offering to the Lord in giving ourselves to him and saying father not mine but thine thy kingdom must come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven now there is a heaven that we're in the midst of but i call it the atmosphere's heaven and many people may not understand the real plan that god has done for so many of our lives by allowing us to dwell in that atmosphere and when I came downstairs, I understood something in the spirit realm about the spiritual arena of spiritual warfare. Now, the spiritual arena is an arena where most people that get caught up in the moment don't quite understand the real plan that God has in that particular place. But the enemy's job is to always throw us off. And where he throws us off at is not recognizing first the natural, then the spiritual. Ha. In the natural is one thing, in the spiritual it is another. Amen. Now it's a given when you're in the spirit because the Bible teaches us and tells us to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. But being sensitive and mindful of the spirit is understanding where the spirit is taking us at any given time. Given a for instance, for the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. God will order your steps. And I love it when God has an order for my steps. Hallelujah. When the Spirit of God has ordered your steps to do something that you've never done before, you begin to take on the challenge of the order. And I thank God for the Spirit of God because he's ordering us. Even our conversation aright must be ordered by the Lord. And I thank God we become what we call oracles of God epistles we become living stories which we call books we're seen and we're read of all men but when you're dealing with a spiritual conflict a battle in that particular arena the bible teaches us even new testament what to do first of all we're engaged in a battle being believers we believe what thus saith the lord and the word of god when he tells us in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 to put on the whole armor of God that we might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now when I understand that word wiles, that means the devices, the strategies, the trickiness of the adversary that can come against you at any given time. And the first place he comes at you is in your mind and your mindset. Oh my God, now you know many times we can be thoroughly fixed or, or I say persuaded in our minds where the enemy can just take our minds from one extreme to the next. And y'all know different things run through the streams of the mind. Praise God, it depends on what conversation you have when you get up to make your first fruits before the Lord. Now I love it when the Spirit of God can just come in you and provide provision for you. I love it when the Spirit of God can begin to put a song or a melody in your heart. I love it when God can give you a rhema word for the season that you're in. And so it's good to have that mindset when the Bible says in Philippians, let this mind that was in Christ Jesus be also inside of you. 
thank God for having a mind that Jesus gave. Oh yes, it's a real blessing. But when you come before the Lord to give God everything, and I'm not just talking about a little bit, I'm talking about everything. I think of the scripture in Romans 12, 1, when Paul says, I beseech you, and he's simply saying, I beg you therefore, brethren, uh, to present your bodies a living sacrifice. For the first portion of your body that's going to be given is going to be the mind. You give your mind and your will over to God because immediately you give all that you have by the thoughts that you think. Now, when we get into that mindset, he said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, make yourself available unto God, which is your most reasonable service. And he says, now be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? Transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. Oh, yes. The mind is most important. When most people begin to think, they can blink for just a moment and something else can be on your mind. Have you ever talked to someone and immediately you're having a conversation with them and they're on the stream of one conversation, next thing you know they're on another thought. And you say, now where did that come from? You wonder, are they sane or are you crazy? Oh yes, you've got to deal with people and their mindset. And sometimes people's attitudes can come from the mind. Emotional stresses can come from the mind. Many different things and avenues that people come through. Your life wick can get in your mind, which we call strongholds. And if you don't worry about strongholds, you need to worry about them more now than ever before because you've got a lot of people with minds that's not quite right. Amen. But that don't mean you crazy. Amen. Now, I don't like for everybody just to come over my house unannounced. At least if they make an appointment, I know what to pray about before they get there. Because, see, if they come to my house with a different mindset, they can drop them thoughts off at my house. I have been in the midst of people where they just had a conversation and reached up and grabbed the conversation out of the air because of the mindset. And the moment I begin to deal with that, I begin to pull down what we call strongholds. Yes, there are strongholds in the mindset of our children where they've been affected by other youth and their personal views and thoughts about everyday life. And when you're dealing with people with the wrong mindset, it messes you up. Oh yes, it can destroy and taint everything that's not like God. So we're dealing with people and the wrong mindsets. And therefore, you have to begin to put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against what we call the wiles of the devil. Oh, yes. See, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. It's not them, but it's him. All he looks for is a vehicle that he can use somebody to ride on. And if he gets the right vehicle and the right mindset of people, he can cause them to be caught up in a moment's time with the wrong mind. And so when the Bible said, let this mind that was in Christ Jesus be also inside of you. When you set your mind on Christ, the Bible said we are seated with him in heavenly places. My God, when you start looking up, he said, he to keep his mind stayed on me while I keep where? In perfect peace. You can have peace that surpass all understanding when most people will seem to think or try to make you think that you're losing your mind. But at the same time, when you got the right mindset, you make the enemy nervous with you. He can't stand that you automatically know the plan of God for your life, which is purpose. And therefore, he cannot allow himself to come into that because you already know who you are and whose you are. And it's obvious when you're in the midst of God's spirit and it's been poured out upon you, many people will look at you like you're crazy. Some will say you have lost your mind. That's why the Bible said we are peculiar people. And then we go back, he says that we're also seen and read. So when the book is being read, they say it's something peculiar about them. Because of him that lives big inside of us, he gives us the proper thoughts in our mind.